My last session on the River Bure at Roxham was successful, however I missed so many opportunities I could have caught a lot more. With this in mind I decided to return back to the River Bure and back to the bridge swim to hone my skills. The plan was to freeline worms and, once I was confident there were perch in the area and taking the bait, try freelining a plastic worm to see if I could catch a perch or two on an artificial bait. The plastic worms I have to use are from the HTO Stinkpot range and the only reason I have them is because they are on offer at two quid a pot from Glasgow Angling Centre and I was two pounds short to qualifying for free delivery and I hate paying for delivery costs. It was a little breezy during my last session here and this swim was nice and sheltered. The wind is far stronger today and this spot is anything but sheltered. The wind is ripping through here and I'm not sure if freelining a worm is going to work. In windy conditions like this, casting as a challenge, keeping the braid tight is virtually impossible and with the waves constantly tugging on the line detecting bites is also going to be difficult. Free lining in these conditions is nigh on impossible so I'm going to move under the bridge to try and get out of the wind. The bridge does provide a bit of shelter but the wind still whistles through here but it is sporadic. The water under the bridge is calmer but when the wind comes through here the water does get choppy making bite detection virtually impossible. Despite the tough conditions, I did get a positive pull which materialised in a perch. The fish wasn't particularly big, but a fish is a fish, so I'm happy. I have to admit that the perch was a bit of a fluke, and I was lucky the wind had dropped at just the right time, i.e. when the perch took the worm. I had another cast after the perch, but decided to give it up as a bad job as the conditions were just too harsh. Being under the bridge was like being in a wind tunnel and it was time to try and find somewhere a little more sheltered. There was a little spot at the far end of the moorings that is out of the way that I thought would be worth a look so it was time to go for a wander. When I reached the end of the boardwalk, I discovered the moorings were undergoing a little work and the area was fenced off. A local dog walker said the other end was also fenced off and the only option was to return back to the bridge and the riverside park or call it a day.
despite being bitterly cold, I didn't want to return home, so I thought I would have a go at jigging a 6cm Fox Rage spiky shad on a 5g jig head. I really do rate the Fox Rage lures, but I don't rate the Fox jig heads. During a session in this very swim, I managed to straighten two micro jig heads on some weed on the riverbed, and in the swim opposite the road bridge, I managed to straighten, and straighten beyond repair, a Fox 5g jig head used on one of their preloaded 7cm fry lures. Rather than risk using a fox jig head, I am using a different and more robust 5 gram jig head. This jig head is made using a thicker hook and whilst it may affect the bite rate, I have total confidence that I won't straighten this hook unless I hook into some really big snag on the riverbed. The wind is too much for a 5 gram jig head, and since I only have my drop shot rod with me, which is very light, I can't use heavy lures. I could go a bit heavier, but that's not my style, as I prefer to fish light. With this in mind, I decided to call time on the session, pack up and disappear home. I was in two minds whether to put up this video, but as I made it my mission to record every fishing session and everything that happens, including the good, the bad and the ugly, it had to go up. So here it is.